Ah, I have an idea. Since you're here, why don't I introduce you to it? It should keep you busy. Can't remember the name, huh? A senior moment, perhaps. Ah, you three. Love it or hate it. The whereabouts of this fascinating creature in the recent Resident Evil 4 remake has left many fans scratching their heads as to where this creature ventured off to. In the video covering the tragic story of Luisera, of which you can watch linked in the description, we discovered that Luis and his research team were responsible for a number of abominations in Resident Evil 4, including some development on the very own U3. While Resident Evil fans were both rejoicing and saddened that this iconic boss fight was not present in Resident Evil 4 Remake, the mysteries behind the creature's expanded lore in Resident Evil 4 Remake gives rise to the question of whether or not this creature will manifest itself as future content for the game. The expanded lore found within the game may give us hints as to U3's true identity in the remake, and for those who skipped over some files or simply need a refresher of the inner workings of this haunting tale of U3's origins, you are in the right spot. Is this creature still stuck behind that wall beneath the island cave system? Will this creature resurface through Ada's upcoming Separate Ways campaign? We'll dive deep into the lore and speculation of what we know about U3 in both the original RE4 and the current Resident Evil 4 remake in this closer look at the one boss that never made it to the final cut of the game. Let's talk about IT, U3. U3 is a fascinating creature in the original game. Its design is horrific and fits well with the Resident Evil series, resembling the tongue of a liquor, the face of a human, and the tail pincers to that of a scorpion. To briefly give context to this creature, it came crashing into the scene back on the original Resident Evil 4 when Leon was traversing the cave system below the island after defeating longtime comrade Jack Krauser. Sadler first mentions the creature, It, to Leon over the radio before Leon notices Ashley's tracking device in a puddle of water. Leon pauses and notices that adjacent to that puddle, there is a plaga-like slime on the walls of the cave and a rather large earthquake-like rumble pulsating within. Something was clearly going on in this cave, and those cages off to the side were about to serve as the setting to this chaotic clash of man versus one-third man. Taking place within the suspended cages and on land, this fight was perhaps the scariest boss in the original Resident Evil 4, tasking players with finding and shooting switches to open doors to eventually escape from the cages, all while this creature haunted the player from just about every angle within the cages. Before we go more into details of the fight itself, I think it would better help us all to understand the anatomy of U3 and why it was created in the first place. Although not much is known of the creature prior to the boss fight, we do know that U3 was the result of one of the experimental bioweapons developed by Sadler's research team on the island. In the remake, we learn that Luis and his team were responsible for leading the development of this and other creatures, and it is possible that the late Luis would have greater insight into the whereabouts of this creation in the upcoming Separate Ways DLC. Again, if you'd like to see just how involved Luis was with Sadler's bio-research, I suggest checking out this video here on your card or in the description, and then come back to this video to get a better understanding of Luis's part in all of this. U3 likely refers to the number of organisms molded together, which in this case refers to three entities, being a human, a reptile, and an insect fused together and all controlled by a plaga. The upper part of the body resembles most similarly to that of a human head. Although warped and a bit disfigured, the face of U3 resembles mostly a human facial structure, along with a spinal structure similar to that of a human as well. Where things start to diverge from human characteristics lay in U3's limbs, as its right hand is clawed and its left is more like a tentacle, acting as a whip to slash Leon from a distance. During the boss's second form, we see a massive pincer-like plaga sprout out from its spine, sporting insanely sharp and lethal mandibles that can cut Leon clean in half. This hodgepodge of a creation was certainly engineered to kill, and with Sadler the ruler of the plagas, it was a weapon designed to stop anyone or anything to get in between Sadler and his goals. 
While Sadler no longer mentions this memorable creature from the original Resident Evil 4 in the remake, but we do have our rather insightful journal entries that give us clues about U3 and what exactly it could be in Resident Evil 4 Remake. Taking our sight off of Sadler for a bit, U3 now seems intrinsically tied to Ramon Salazar, the big cheese of the castle section of the game. Throughout the castle in the remake, players are able to stumble across a series of journal entries from Salazar's servant, Isidro Uriarte Tarvarera, that shed some insight into the U-line of Plagas. In the Chronicles of Pursuit file, it details the work and creation of U2. No, not the band, but the creatures that would come to be known as the Novistadores. The fusion of a human gene with various insect species, these creatures are known to camouflage and have eyes that glisten in the dark. These novistadores were treated by Sadler, and he in turn praised Isidro for his efforts and contributions. Later in Isidro's life, the servant makes another revelation, and this one here pertains to U3, a U3 that certainly takes the form of something else entirely here in this remake. In Chronicles of Pursuit 2, Isidro remarks, October, eight years since my awakening. At last, my noble pursuit progresses to its final stage, the fusion of human and insect. The housekeeper has graciously volunteered herself for the experiment. I shall pour my whole heart into this endeavor in order to transcend humanity and make Master Ramon proud. March, nine years since my awakening. A glorious union has been made. The housekeeper has endured much suffering, but not for naught. Behold, the fruits of our labor in all its beauty. I shall consecrate this perfect life form with the name U3, for three is the most beautiful and complete number. April, nine years since my awakening. U3, my dear hound, Pesanta, has been chosen to serve as the right hand of Master Ramon. But is two not better than one? Now it is my turn to demonstrate my loyalty his humble servant, Isidro Uriarte Talvarera. Pesanta, the right hand of Ramon Salazar. I've sent my right hand to dispose of you. Your right hand comes off? Hmm. Say whatever you please. Die, you worm! Oh my god! Does this sound familiar? The right hand is the other name for Verdugo, a fight that takes place in the underground labs after Leon encounters Salazar in the throne room. We can better understand Isidro's lust for recognition from Salazar, as it seems as though he wants to serve Salazar on equal footing to that of the newly created U3. The name Pesanta is also of particular importance, as the name in Catalan folklore relates to a dog, or sometimes a cat, that enters homes at night while its dwellers are asleep, laying on the chests of those asleep to cause pain in vivid, terrifying nightmares. Isidro refers specifically to her as U3, my dear hound. If we take a closer look at Pesanta, or U3 in this game, it appears to be this figure here, donning the red robes on Salazar's right side. The very creature who kidnapped Ashley when she tossed Leon the key to escape the cage in Chapter 9. Pesanta, the housekeeper, has a few files of her own, which account for some very interesting insight into herself as a character, who unfortunately succumbed to the horrific fate of working for the very man she once despised. Her first memo was written many years prior to the setting of the game, in which Diego Salazar, the seventh ruling Castellan and the father of Ramon, was still alive and served as the head of the castle. Pesanta recalls her disgust for the behavior of Diego's son Ramon and his allure of the strange cult in her first memo, which reads, I have failed you, my lord. I was unable to fulfill my final commandment and keep the boy from the path of wickedness. I caught a glimpse of Master Ramon's evil temperament during his younger years. When he discovered a servant mocked him by uttering pulgarcito behind his back, he summoned her to his private chambers. After forcing her to kneel before him, Ramon doused her face with a vial of vitriol he pulled out of his pocket. The young master watched with glee when the servant writhed in agony as the skin melted from her face. His twisted grin still haunts my dreams to this very day. As time passed, Ramon's treachery only deepened, and that infernal cult soon learned they could prey upon his vulnerable heart. Curse the fiends! They've manipulated Master Ramon and turned him into their puppet. 
Worst of all, they've managed to use him to unleash Las Plagas, that the Salazar family has fought so long and hard to keep sealed away. Lord Diego, rest assured, I intend to watch over Master Ramon until the very end, whatever fate may befall us. As a faithful servant of the Salazar family since birth, it is my duty and my penance to you. That should do it. It is here that we realize that this lady, Pesanta, the housekeeper, sets aside her disgust in the boy to uphold her duty to protect Ramon as Diego had requested. Well aware of the Las Plagas cult and the possibility that it could overthrow the order of the Salazar family and the castle they inherit, it all came to a head when years later we find her brief yet poignant entry in Housekeeper's Memo 2. It reads as follows. Oh, Master Ramon, with tomorrow's procedure I shall finally surpass the limitations of this mortal shell. What's left of me now shall soon be gone. Magnificent! The holy body is a wondrous miracle. The fealty I've sworn to Master Ramon is the sole light that illuminates my path. Our fates shall be entwined until the very end. Have you ever known such loyalty? Quite the difference in tone from the first memo, right? From the sounds of it, it seems like she may have awakened of which is a process in which people become injected with the Plaga and become one with Las Plagas under Sadler. Her expression of eagerness to elevate her existence to better serve under Salazar is seen here in the madness felt in her voice. The last line in particular, have you ever known such loyalty, with the exclamation and question mark, sufficiently encapsulates the insanity felt within her. It is thus tragic and hard to believe that this one thing she cared about, the safety of Castle Salazar and its inhabitants from the Las Plagas cult, had eventually taken over her too, and the boy she could not save from the cult's grasp. She became the first U3, the first Verdugo to become Salazar's right hand. Interestingly, Pesanta, this Verdugo creature in the red robes shown here in the scene is the last time we ever see of it in the game, as the one we end up fighting at the end of chapter 10 is the one in black, and we find out exactly who it is in the final part to this trifecta of Chronicles of Pursuit files right before the fight with Verdugo itself. Getting back to Isidro, Salazar's servant, he writes, May, nine years since my awakening. Upon the release of this valve, black liquid shall enter my veins and circulate throughout my entire body. I expect this will be the most painful experience of my life. I await the trial with great anticipation. It is an honor to suffer through the holy labor of rebirth. The next time I awaken, it will be as a true servant of Master Ramon. I, Isidro Uriarte Talavarera, make this vow. I will surpass the limitations of man and become a true servant of God. I will find the heretics and serve as their executioner, their Verdugo. The very Verdugo we end up battling in the underground laboratory is the one by the name of Isidro Uriarte Tarvarera. Out of a mad desire to be the Verdugo to protect and serve Salazar as his designated hitman, Isidro underwent the process Pesanta went through to become Salazar's second Verdugo, this time destined to live solely to kill those attempting to thwart Salazar. As said earlier, the U3 in Resident Evil 4 Remake, the one donning the red robes, is nowhere to be seen after it kidnaps Ashley. So where on earth could it be? Many fans are speculating that it could reappear in Ada's upcoming Separate Ways campaign in which Ada will likely encounter this remaining Verdugo. With both Verdugo and Resident Evil 4 Remake essentially being called U3, will the creature that haunted us nearly 20 years ago in the original Resident Evil 4 be named something to that of U4 if that model were to resurface as a boss fight with Ada? Could that figure be kept within the confines of that red robe? I want to know from you all in the comments what you think of that. Do you think we will battle against Pesanta, the first U3 in Resident Evil 4 Remake? Only time will tell, but if Pesanta were to rear her head at Ada in the upcoming separate ways, Perhaps we will be in for the nightmare of our lifetime, as the Catalan folklore so suggests. Remember to watch this playlist containing the deep lore and stories of Luis and his ties to Sadler's abominations, and also make sure to check out the second video there about the savage history behind the power of Honk. Thank you all for the awesome support, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Peace!